Hello, I'm Bruce Ecker, and in connection with my online presentations and articles on memory reconsolidation and how understanding memory reconsolidation gives a psychotherapist much more control of producing transformational change, whatever therapy systems are used. Briefly here, I thought you might enjoy the story of how memory reconsolidation came into my life late one night in 2005 and changed everything. Up until that point, as a co-creator of coherence therapy, I was busy doing what founders of therapies always have to do. You teach and promote your system of therapy in competition with all the other founders of all the other therapies. Uh, but then, as I said, finding memory reconsolidation changed everything because as soon as I began reading neuroscientists' research articles on it, I saw that it is a core process of transformational change that is shared by all highly effective therapies, even when their differing techniques and differing theories seem mutually alien and incompatible. I saw that understanding therapeutic action in terms of memory reconsolidation is the key to a remarkable unification of therapies. And in seeing that, I was done with the whole mindset of competing therapies. And I felt very, very happy to be done with that. And I still do. My focus became the inclusive good news that in memory reconsolidation, we have a remarkable unification of the therapy field because we go beyond theory into knowing the brain's own conditions for producing transformational change. And we then recognize how so many very different seeming therapies actually do fulfill those core conditions. For example, Previously published cases of transformational change from AEDP, EMDR, emotion-focused therapy, and uh, interpersonal neurobiology are examined in our book, Unlocking the Emotional Brain. And we show that the same crucial steps of the memory reconsolidation process are there in each case even though those crucial steps are not explicitly defined by each therapy as part of its methodology. In coherence therapy, those same crucial steps are explicitly called for and are carried out very explicitly. So case examples of coherence therapy are particularly useful in an introductory workshop for showing how memory reconsolidation works. So that's what I mean by saying that finding memory reconsolidation changed everything for me. What I and my colleagues in the Coherence Psychology Institute now teach is what your client's or patient's brain needs you to do within the therapy systems you already use to bring about decisive transformational change with maximum efficiency. By understanding memory reconsolidation, the dizzying panoply of therapy systems becomes a rich repertoire of choices for tailoring the core process of transformational change to each client or patient. Imagine switching mid-session from one system's methods to another system's methods with no sense of discontinuity at all because you have a steady focus on a universal innate process of profound change that could be facilitated either way. And now, entirely for your amusement, here's the story of the night we met. As I told it during a conference keynote address several years ago. I mentioned that 
both clinical observations and lab research have revealed the same core process of profound change. The clinical observations were published in this book, Depth-Oriented Brief Therapy, in late 1995. For several years, my clinical collaborator and co-author of that book, Laurel Hulley, and I had closely studied outliers, those exceptional therapy sessions in which profound change happened to occur, an unmistakable lasting breakthrough. And finally, we identified a particular sequence of experiences that was always present in those outliers. So we developed a system of therapy consisting of heading for that sequence of experiences right from the start of therapy. And we found that working in that way increased our effectiveness enormously. So we wrote Depth-Oriented Retherapy to share with the field what we had found. A few years later, neuroscientists began detecting memory reconsolidation, and in 2004, they identified the sequence of experiences that the brain requires in order to take a specific piece of emotional learning or conditioning and unlearn it so thoroughly that it is erased. Erased both as neural circuitry and as a behavioral or subjective response. This key sequence of experiences that researchers found was the same sequence of experiences we had described in the Depth-Oriented Brief Therapy book. Late one night in San Luis Obispo, of all places, I was lucky enough to come across what those researchers had found. You know, I wish I could tell this story by saying it was in a bar in San Luis Obispo, but I can't. But it was in the next best place for a story. It was in a motel room. Yes, Laurel and I had gone to a motel room. It had seemed like the right thing to do, uh, given that along with our professional collaboration, we were both married to, e to each other. To, to each other. Uh, and with children, and we needed a vacation. So in the fall of 2005, we were in San Luis Obispo. And late one night there in our motel room, there's Laurel reading a vacation novel, which in her case means Dostoevsky, okay? And, and there I am, uh, compulsively searching online through neuroscience research journals. Okay, that's the picture. I had been searching and searching for weeks, actually, because what we were seeing in therapy uh, was such a definite process of transformational change that we finally figured that something corresponding to this process must have shown up on the neurological level in brain research. So, for me, figuring out how things work has been a deep fascination all my life and had led me into my first career as a research physicist and then into psychotherapy. And now my lust for understanding how things work was making me do this in a motel room, you know, searching feverishly for this corresponding neuroscience. Well, I wasn't at all sure that I would find anything, but uh, that night in that motel room, I got lucky. There on my screen... <laughs> what? What? There on my screen, across a crowded desk, was a journal article on reconsolidation research. And it was looking back at me. And down by the shore, an orchestra's playing. And even the palms seemed to be swaying as I leaned in closer and read and realized that here was the same process that we had found with its neurological mechanism laid bare in controlled studies. I was on cloud nine. We had just spent days wandering around in the splendors of Hearst Castle. And I said to Laurel, this makes me happier than I'd be if we lived in that castle. 
But of course, she hadn't seen this research yet and didn't really know what I was talking about. So she momentarily looked up from Dostoevsky and gave me one of those beneficent spousal smiles that means, I'm so glad you're glad. (laughs) My poor wife, she had no idea that my little comment meant that in her future lay the ordeal of writing yet another book with me. Well, uh, Unlocking the Emotional Brain was published last fall, and we seem to have survived it.